Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this. Welcome to the Panal Geology and Mineral Museum monthly meeting for March sixteenth, two thousand and twenty-two. Gonna um, we're just getting started. I'm starting a little bit late. Uh, my apologies. I meant to start about two minutes earlier. Uh, if you. Ah, uh, let's see. There we go. Uh, during the talk, you can add your questions to, for our speaker at the end or, or at in the YouTube channel, and I will get them and we will get them to, answered for you um, from Evan Jones, who's just setting up his PowerPoint and ready, getting ready to go. Um, I see that. I see that here. Um, welcome, and uh, uh, let's see, what news do we have? If you didn't see it, our Meteors and Dinosaurs event was really good last weekend, last uh, Saturday, and happy Thanksgiving, or Thanksgiving, yeah, let's go for Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. How about, um, there's a light, uh, happy St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. I'm already wearing green. Um so you can't pinch me. I'll be wearing green again tomorrow. Um, happy March. Welcome. That's all the news I have for you. Next, if you want to, um, we are open Wednesday through Saturday, 10 to 3. Uh, Wednesday through, yeah. And uh, all of that stuff. So come on by anytime. I'm going to... Uh, Add Evan to the screen there. He is. And he can say hello. Uh, hello. Uh, Evan Jones is our speaker. Um, he probably gets tired of people saying he's Bob Jones' son. Uh, <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. Uh, they have both been very active in... Arizona Rock Circles for a long time. Um, and I'm going to, Evan's talk is on, on Wolf and Night, and I'm going to let him uh, finish introducing himself, however he wants to be introduced. And, um, uh, and then when he's ready, start his slideshow all about Wolf and Night. That's tonight's topic, Wolf and Night. Okay. All right. So. I will. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, my name is Evan Jones, and uh, I was born and raised here in, in Arizona. And, and as you heard before, my dad's Bob Jones. I'm sure most of you, of you have heard of him. Um, and I've been uh, collecting minerals for a long time, most of my life, and uh, of course, being from Arizona, obviously wolfenite is something that crops up often. And uh, I also have been a mineral dealer uh, since the 1980s, buying and selling minerals full time. So um, yeah, well, that's pretty much uh, <laughs> sums it up about me. I don't wanna drone on about myself. Let's get right into the talk. Uh, the title of the talk is Wolf and I, the Official State Mineral of Arizona. And uh, now that is a pr fairly new phenomenon. We have not had an official state mineral until fairly recently. And e Evan, it, yes. you, you might want to start your slideshow. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea, Bob. Let's, let's do that. We're going to click slideshow here. Uh, that looks right. So uh, now a um, little bat, bit of backstory here. Uh, so why why haven't we had an official state mineral until just recently? Um, because after all, uh, you can see out here I've compiled a list of all of the official state things of Arizona uh, that we've had for a long time, some for many, many years and other things also fairly recently but you know 
we've got an official state bird, a flower, fish. You go down the list here, uh, we've even got official state neckwear, which is the bola tie. Uh, the official state gun, which is the Colt single action revolver. And down, down here towards the bottom, we get into some, some of the things that we're very interested in. The official state gemstone of Arizona is naturally turquoise. Um, we have so many great turquoise localities in the state that have produced beautiful gem grade material. The official state fossil is petrified wood. That was actually spearheaded by a professor of mine uh, by the name of Dr. Robert S. Dietz at ASU back in the 1980s. And he got that uh, passed or helped, helped publicize that. Uh, the official state medal of Arizona, of course, is copper. But until very, very recently, we didn't have an official state mineral. Um, now, why why should it be wolfenite? We, there are so many other great minerals found here in the state. Um, well, here are some reasons why. Arizona boasts more wo world-class wolfenite localities than anywhere on the planet. Uh, at last count, there are over 200 wolfenite occurrences in the state. And, of course, wolfenite is a highly desirable and attractive mineral that collectors uh, love to, to have in their collection. Uh, here are some examples of Arizona wolfenite and why, uh, which illustrate why it's so popular. Here we've got Arizona wolfenite specimens that have been featured on many mineral show posters. Here's two right here, one from Houston and one from uh, the Tucson show. Well, from a few years ago. Arizona Wolf and I has graced the cover of many mineral books, uh, including the one on the left by Phoenix's own Neil Bierce and his field guide uh, to Arizona minerals and the cover of the Mineralogical Record magazine, Mineral Collections in Arizona. Here we have Arizona Wolf and I featured on mineral magazine covers. Mineralogical record on the left, that's a red cloud wolfenite, and rock and gem on the right, that's a rowley mine wolfenite. Mineral dealer advertisements, such as my company, Unique Minerals. Uh, we've had Arizona wolfenite in some of our advertisements in magazines. There's even been a wolfenite calendar with, of course, an Arizona wolfenite on the cover of the calendar. So now we know that wolfenite is very popular, especially Arizona wolfenite. Uh, but let's get back to the basics here. What is wolfenite? Well, wolfenite is a compound of lead, molybdenum, and oxygen. And uh, it forms in the tetragonal crystal system. And uh, other well-known minerals that crystallize in this crystal system uh, are sulfur, anatase, and zircon. Uh, now there are three different or six separate crystal systems that all minerals uh, crystallize in, but tetragonal is, is one of them. Has a hardness of 2.5 to 3, so it's a little soft. Uh, the color, at least uh, typically in Arizona, is orange, yellow, orange, yellow, red, very brilliant colors, but it can also be brown and, and actually Pure wolfenite is colorless. Mineralogically speaking, wolfenite is a member of the scheelite group, uh, which forms a series with stolzite. So stolzite, right, you can see here, is lead, tungsten, and oxygen, so lead, tungstate. And wolfenite is the molybdenum end member of that series, lead, molybdate. Where does it form? It forms in weathered the weathered or oxidized zones of hydrothermal lead deposits where there is some molybdenum present. How was it named? It was first described by a Jesuit priest in Austria by the name of Franz Javier von Wolfen, who wrote a monograph on lead ore from Bleiberg, Carinthia, Austria, which is the type locality for Wolfenite. 
So here we see an idealized, uh, idealized drawings of a typical tetragonal crystal form. Looking at the side of the crystal, you can see that a, a tetragonal mineral looks like uh, two steep pyramids with the bases attached. Viewing from, viewed from the top, it looks like a four-sided pyramid. Now, if most of you are probably uh, familiar with wolfenite crystals, and you will quickly recognize that these don't look like wolfenites. Well, that's because wolfenite likes to do this. Let's go to the next slide. The typical wolfenite crystal form looks like this. So the side uh, profile of the tetragonal form is, is squished down the vertical axis. And then looking down the top of the crystal, it looks like this flat, uh, uh, flattened, you know, bladed form. Uh, so if I toggle back between the two the two uh, drawings, you can see what's going on here. This is your typical tetragonal form here, but wolfenite likes to mo be modified for some reason, and it typically takes these tabular forms, and what you end up with are crystals that look like this. I'm not saying that wolfenite never forms in the, the other type of, of tetragonal habit. It does. It's just not so, so common. So here are some wolfenite crystals from the Red Cloud Mine that were collected about seven years ago. And that's, there they are sitting in the palm of my hand. So moving on. Now, how did uh, wolfenite become the official state mineral of Arizona? Well, it happened because a bill called SB 2092 was passed uh, by the state legislature. Now, how did that happen? Well, it, mainly due to the efforts of these two guys. Al Dr. Alex Schaus on the left, he lives in Oro Valley, and uh, you can see him there <laughs> proudly holding his Perky Box license plate, which took some effort to get approved by the the uh, Department of Motor Vehicles. Um, they thought it meant something else. <laughs> he uh, he finally convinced them it actually means uh, you know small small sized mineral boxes for collecting thumbnail specimens. And this fellow on the right, Chris Whitney Smith, he's the president of the Mineralogical Society of Arizona, lives in Phoenix. These two guys really pushed for wolfenite to to become the Arizona State Mineral. So I'm going to go through a little timeline. Uh, it was back in 2013 that Alex realized, hey, we don't have an Arizona State mineral. So he thought, let's, how about wolfenite? In 2015, copper was designated as the official state metal. So that really lit a, lit a fire under these guys to get, get going on this. So uh, he contacted his local state representative down in Tucson, asked him to sponsor a bill you know, a wolfenite bill. It was introduced in 2016, but it died in committee. So a year later, it was reintroduced, and uh, this time with a lot of uh, signatures uh, to help support this. So the bill passed committee and uh, immediately received support from all the gem and mineral groups in Arizona. Now here's a picture of, of Alex with some of the uh, Oh, and Chris with MSA, Future Rock Hounds of America, they went down to the state capitol on the 7th of February 2017 to promote, promote this. Uh, so in February, during the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show, uh, things really kicked into high gear. Uh, Alex was running around collecting signatures. Uh, special promotions were happening. The, the, bills, the bill passed committee again. Um, and then later that that week, that's when the Rockhounds of the Future went to the Capitol. They brought copies of the Wolfenite calendar to hand out to the members of the House. The House voted to pass the bill. There's some signage that was created by uh, Chris and Alex and Don Duchel to promote this. 
down at the Tucson show in 2017. So uh, on the 10th, then the Senate got the bill. By the 12th, the uh, members of the state legislature and gov the governor's representatives actually came to the, the show in Tucson to see the Wolfenite exhibit that these guys had put together to promote the bill. Um, fast forwarding to uh, March 16th, the bill passed the Senate, hooray, and it went to Governor Ducey for signature. He signed it on March 22nd, making Wolfenite the official state mineral of Arizona. This shows the exhibit that these guys put together of Arizona Wolfenite specimens at the Tucson show, and here's a label. It's an example of the label that they used to help promote this. And as I said, state representatives and governor's uh, assistants had come down to visit the show and to see this, this great exhibit and meet all the collectors. It really helped uh, secure the uh, support to get this bill passed. And this is a great picture. Chris was there when uh, when the uh, the Senate passed the bill, and he took that picture right at the moment that they passed it. Okay, so now I mentioned earlier that there were uh, last count over 200 separate locations in Arizona that have produced uh, the mineral wolfenite, but we're going to only look at some of the most important wolfenite specimen producing localities in Arizona. And these are the ones that have produced high quality specimens that, uh, that collectors really uh, uh, seek and re really want for their collection. So we're going to go by county, uh, starting with Cochise County. You've got the Hilltop Mine, Defiance Mine, Silver Bill Mine, and the Tombstone District. Gila County, you've got the 79 mine and the nearby Finch mine. La Paz County in the southwestern part of the state, the Red Cloud mine and the North Geronimo mine. Maricopa County hosts the Rowley mine. Mojave County, you've got a, a, a small locality called the Rawhide mine, which has produced some nice things. Down near Tucson in Pima County, you've got the Old Yuma mine and the Total Rec mine. Pinal County, you've got the Tiger. A mining district and the Ford mine. Santa Cruz County has the Glove mine, Yavapai, the Purple Passion, and down in Yuma County, the Puzzler and the Hull mine. So we're going to take each one of these and look at some uh, examples of specimens from each of these mines. Uh, John Callahan down in Tucson, who at one time was half owner of the 79 mine, was kind enough to produce this map for me, showing all of those mines that I just listed. And you can see that they're all in the southern half of the state. Now, the reason for that is um, we can go back to the conditions that we talked about under which wolfenite forms, and that is hydrothermal lead deposits that have been emplaced you know, in veins, uh, basically composed of, of the lead mineral galena. When these get altered and weathered and oxidized, you get a number of mineral byproducts. Uh, and wolfenite is one of those. Well, where has, has deep weathering occurred in, in Arizona? In the southern half of the state. This is called the, the Basin and Range Province, and it's been chopped up by a series of faults over the past 15 million years or so, um, leading to, to a, you know, all these series of valleys and mountains. So all of these mineral deposits have been exposed to deep weathering over many millions of years. And that's why all of these secondary minerals have formed such as wolfenite. Other secondary minerals you've heard of would be things like azurite, malachite, um, cerusite, mimetite, vanadinite, that kind of stuff. But uh, so the northern half of the state, since it's covered with thick 
the layers of sedimentary rock, it, the uh, metallic veins there are mostly buried and have never been exposed to, to oxidation, much less mining. So, uh, so that'll be our geology lesson for the day. Let's move on and look at some of these, these locations. So the first stop is the Defiance Mine, which is near a little town called Gleason, Arizona. And you can see it there in the center of this photograph. Um, and Defiance Mine specimens uh, are very, can be very high quality. Here's a sample here that was collected in 1957 when a very large pocket of these, these uh, what they call coxcomb wolfenite crystals were discovered. And this, this discovery produced many hundreds and hundreds of specimens, which grace a lot of collections today. Here's another example from that 1957 discovery. Uh, this is in the Les Presmic collection. Now this pocket I might mention was collected by Dick Badeau and a couple other guys. And he was a very famous and active mineralogist and collector here in, in Arizona for many, many years, and who unfortunately passed away uh, several years back. There's another Defiance Mine piece. Now, right next door to the Defiance Mine is the Silver Bill Mine. And the Silver Bill has produced very nice wolfenites but uh, somewhat different than defi the defiance, typical defiance mine pieces. So here are some examples from that mine. Beautiful yellow crystals. Here's a specimen in my collection that's uh, a wolfenite crystal perched on blue hemimorphite with some calcite. Also in Cochise County is the Hilltop Mine. And the Hilltop Mine is located in the Chiricahua Mountains. You can see it, the mine dumps there in the center of the photograph. Uh, this mine was very active in the early part of the 20th, 20th century and then it uh, shut down. But during that time, it produced a lot of nice wolfenite specimens, mainly in the 30s and 40s. Now these wolfenites are very distinctive. The best ones exhibit these yellow crystals on snow white calcite, which is uh, very unique uh, among Arizona wolfenites and actually very unique among worldwide occurrences. Many of these specimens were collected by a famous field collector in the first part of the 20th century by the name of Ed Over. And he also had collected at the Red Cloud Mine. Many other localities throughout the West, actually, in the 30s and 40s. Here's a close up of a nice hilltop specimen example. You can see the yellow crystals with the white calcite. Here's another beautiful example of hilltop mine wolfenite. Unfortunately, this locality has been caved in and collapsed, inaccessible for many, many, many years. So if you see anything from this mine, it's, it's going to be old. Now, the Tombstone District, uh, which is more well known for silver, it, after all, was a silver mining district. Um, however, it did produce some pretty fine wolfenite specimens. Uh, this is a fairly recent picture of the area of, around the Tough Nut and Empire Mine, uh, which has produced, traditionally produced some nice wolfenites in the past. So this example is uh, 3.5 centimeters tall in the Presmic collection. Here's another nice tombstone wolfenite associated with the with another lead mineral by the name of nematite. Another 
wonderful combination of wolfenite with mimetite from the tough nut mine at the at, in the tombstone area. All right, jumping up to the central part of the state in Gila County, we have uh, in the Dripping Springs Mountains the 79 mine. The 79 mine was uh, a, an old silver and base metal mine that was operating in, again, the early part of the 20th century, but from about the 1950s on, field collectors have been going in there collecting all kinds of wonderful things, mostly secondary lead and copper minerals, including wolfenite. So you can see the old head frame there and some of the old buildings. <laughs> so John Callahan, he's the fellow who made that, that nice map that I showed earlier. Here's a picture of him underground uh, collecting wolfenite at the 79 mine. So that's, uh, of course, that's uh, <laughs> a little bit of Photoshop there, but uh, he's having a good time. This is what uh, what you call a uh, what collectors have called red spot wolfenite from the 79 mine. You can see the dark red spot in the center of this orange crystal. It's kind of different. 79 mine is the only place that has produced these. And that beautiful example is in Mark Hay's collection, a Phoenix collector. And these specimens were collected in the mid 70s. Another specimen from that time frame in the early to mid 70s, wolfenite on motramite from the 79 mine. Beautiful three centimeter delicate yellow wolfenite crystal uh, associated with, uh, I believe, hydrozincite with small white crystals there. 2.5 centimeter wafer thin blade of 79 mine wolfenite. And this is a specimen that was in uh, Bob Jones's collection for many, many years. It's now in my collection, and it was collected in 1969. Another one collected by John Callahan, 4.5 centimeters wide. And a very interesting wolfenite specimen here, entirely covered by hemimorphite, which is a zinc silicate. Now very close to the 79 mine uh, and a mine that exploited a very similar vein system is the Finch mine. Now what's interesting about the Finch mine is these wolfenite crystals are almost always coated with druzy quartz. Now, not only do, does this make the specimens very beautiful, but it makes them very durable. So here you can see a perfect example of these yellow crystals coated with the sparkly quartz. Sometimes the quartz coating is very thin, as in this example. These are wolfenite crystals with a just a, a paper-thin layer of quartz on top. From the Finch mine. Another specimen of beautiful orange wolfenite coated with quartz um, and it looks like associated with calcite. All right let's travel down to the southwestern part of the state to arguably the most famous wolfenite locality in Arizona and perhaps the world, the famous red cloud mine north of Yuma in La Paz County. Here are a couple of photos that I put in here. That's how it looked in the 1980s, back when it was exclusively an underground mine. You can see the head frame there. In 2003, this, when this picture was taken, 
uh, a series of, of open pit mining uh, ventures had, had occurred. So uh, you can see the dumps from the open pit, which worked the uh, directly into the vein exposure. Now in 19, uh, oh, here's a good underground shot by Bud Stanley in the South Stokes of the Red Cloud Mine. You can see the portion of the vein has been removed here. And this is a very good area for collecting wolfenite. This wonderful crystal, 4.5 centimeters, was found in 1938 by Ed Over. Remember, I mentioned him before. Uh, arguably the finest pocket of wolfenite crystals found anywhere in the world, certainly at the Red Cloud Mine. And this wonderful example is in the Wayne and Donna Light collection. And you can see why Red Cloud Mine Wolfenite is so collectible and so popular. Look at that intense color. Um, that's a small specimen, but the crystal is sitting on a nice bed of red mimetite. Now, I mentioned uh, the open pitting that had been done at the Red Cloud Mine. Now, in 1996, the, the group of uh, miners that were, were working this open pit hit an incredible fissure, a crack that went many, many feet lined with, with crystals of wolfenite. This was a completely unprecedented find at the mine, and, and here's a an example of the specimen from that 1996 discovery. They pulled out many, many crystal plates of beautiful wolfenite crystals, you know, whereas in previous years, most collectors, you know, could only manage to, to find a specimen with maybe one or two crystals on it. But this discovery produced large specimens with many, many crystals on each piece, which was very unprecedented. Here's another specimen from that from that discovery. You can see that, and this is a large piece. This is 12 centimeters across. You can see all those crystals. This is another one from 1996. Beautiful specimen. This is in a collection in Europe. This one collected underground uh, fairly recently. Um, this specimen's been on a lot of pictured a lot in, in magazines and calendars and whatnot and that's in my collection here's another more recent specimen collected in 2015. wolfenite crystals from this mine tend to be thick and beveled and you can you can really see that in some of these pictures with those beautiful beveled edges. It really shows off that lovely tetragonal, a modified tetragonal form. It's a large single crystal on barite. There's that bevel I was talking about. Can't get enough of these red cloud wolfenites. Now, uh, not too far from the Red Cloud Mine, which you can see here in the lower part of the Google Earth picture, um, not too far north of, of the Red Cloud is the North Geronimo Mine. And it actually exploits the same vein system, which runs uh, in this direction, north and south, following the Red Cloud Fault. So as you might expect, the Wolfenite crystals look very similar although they tend to be a little, even a little more red. So here's a wonderful gem quality window pane crystal of wolfenite from the North Geronimo mine. A miniature specimen, two crystals from the North Geronimo. Another specimen from the North Geronimo. And you know, if you didn't know any better, you'd, you'd swear these were red clouds. 
specimens, but they, they are not. Moving to the central part of the state is the Rowley Mine, which is a, a favorite of many people. This, this old abandoned mine, which was originally a gold mine, uh, has produced wonderful wolfenite specimens for many, many years. Uh, collectors have been going there since at least the mid to late 1950s. Uh, it's now under claim and uh, currently well, not much is happening there, but uh, it's not open to the public. Here are a couple photos that I took. We were invited to take a tour of the mine. Uh, this is the main incline on the left, and that's me underground on the 125-foot level in 2015. Now, this is a really interesting photo. Most people have never seen a wolfenite pocket underground in place before it has been collected. Well, this is what it looks like. So the field of view from right to left here is about 40 centimeters, which, uh, which is what, that's about, uh, oh, I guess that's about a foot across, a little bit over a foot across. So that's what a, a nice pocket of wolfenite looks like. We did not get to collect it, by the way. <laughs> we could only look. Uh, but here's uh, an example of a nice Rowley mine wolfenite. Typically, the crystals from here are orange and very lustrous and transparent. Some of the more aesthetic wolfenite specimens in the world are from the Rowley mine, which is not, not too far from Gila Bend in the uh, Painted Rock Mountains. This is a rather large specimen. It's almost an entire pocket of wolfenite uh, associated with brilliant orange mimetite. And those two mineral species really like each other and tend to uh, develop together very often. Wolfenite with mimetite from the Rowley in Mark Hayes collection, lovely specimen. And at this mine, the wolfenite can actually uh, be found with blue chrysocolla, which makes for a really interesting color combination. And there's a specimen that I just purchased, and I'm holding it right there in my front yard, taking a picture. It's now in the Scott Rudolph collection out on the East Coast. Delicate wolfenite crystals from the Rowley mine. Here's a very large specimen, 18 centimeters across. Another nearly complete uh, pocket of wolfenite crystals. Another pocket of wolfenite crystals, which uh, uh, when the mine was still open to collecting, I, I actually collected that specimen back in 2004. Similar piece, 12 centimeters across. Just love these rally pieces. I didn't have a picture of the rawhide mine, but here's a Google Earth image showing a, its approximate location west of Alamo Lake in Mojave County. And it hasn't produced a lot of specimens, but uh, the ones that it has produced are very nice. Uh, this lovely piece is in Mark Hayes collection. And this specimen is in Stephen Cox collection down in Tucson. And moving to Pima County is one of the great wolfenite producing mines and vanadenite as well in the state of Arizona, the old Yuma mine, which back in the 80s was being worked for specimens. Here's some photographs from about 1983 showing the decline and from above and then from below the uh, 
well, showing the workings there. So here's some examples of old Yuma mine specimens. This is an amazing piece, a single crystal, orange in color, 10 centimeters tall. Great specimen in Mark Hayes collection from the old Yuma. This one in my collection, nine centimeters tall, very similar to red cloud crystals, but orange rather than red. Beautiful combination of zoned wolfenite crystals with cerusite crystals. And moving to the southern portion of Pima County is an old mine called the Total Wreck Mine. It, there it is in 1909. It has produced some lovely wolfenites, such as this piece, frosted with calcite. And this beautiful specimen, somewhat reminiscent of uh, glove mine wolfenite or, or defiance mine wolfenite, but that's from the total wreck. Up in Pinal County is the world famous Mammoth St. Anthony mine, otherwise known as Tiger. Here are some photographs that were taken in the Collins cut up on the surface uh, at Tiger in 2012. Uh, you can probably recognize some of these folks. Uh, that's myself there on the left. And your very own uh, Dr. Ray Grant right there in the center. That's Bill Yedowitz behind him. And this is Mike Shannon, who is too busy digging to turn around to look at the camera. <laughs> Here are some samples of wolfenite from Tiger. Uh, this one is very old from the 1890s, and that was collected in that open cut where, where you saw our pictures just in the previous slide. Now, we didn't find anything like that, but uh, the rich ores, of course, have been long since removed. But these, these early wolfenites were spectacular and really made a, a splash on the mineral market back in the 1890s. Here's another tiger specimen from the 1890s. This is in the University of Arizona Gem and Mineral Museum collection. Here's a specimen collected uh, in later years, probably in the 1940s or 50s from the underground at Tiger. Lovely cluster from the Mammoth St. Anthony mine, again collected from the underground prior to 1953 when the mine closed. So really, if you see most anything from, from this mine, it's going to be from 1953 or prior because that's when the mine shut down. Of course, Tiger is very famous for its mineral combinations. Here you see wolfenite with lovely green dioptase. And here's the trifecta of wolfenite, dioptase, and cerusite from Tiger. Very sought after and desirable. Same thing here, wolfenite, dioptase, and cerusite. Uh, pretty much the only place in the world that has produced this particular assemblage. Now here's a Google Earth view of uh, Tiger, which is in northern, um, well actually I should say southeastern Pinal County rather. And the Ford mine is over here, not too far from Tiger, and it it worked the same vein system as the Mammoth St. Anthony mine. Didn't produce a lot of specimens, but it did produce a few nice things. Uh, this is a wolfenite from the Ford mine collected in 2003. Uh, that's six centimeters tall. I guess that's it for the Ford mine that I've got. Um, 
Moving to the southern part of the state in Santa Cruz County is the Glove Mine, which was a lead silver mine. Again, worked in the early part of the 20th century to the middle part of the 20th century, but a lot of wolfenite was produced from this from this location. And in 1958, the miners that were working it for silver and lead discovered these huge chambers lined with wolfenite crystals. So we're fortunate enough to have photographs that were taken of this pocket. These photos were taken by a guy named Harry Olson, and these specimens were collected by Al Haig and Dick Bedeau, but this pocket was almost big enough to walk into, by all accounts. And here you can see some close-ups. The field of view here is going to be several feet across, and zooming in, you can see the lovely wolfenite crystals in place. And this must have been a sight to behold. Look at that. Fortunately, um, those guys were allowed to collect all of this. So we have many, many specimens preserved from this particular 1958 discovery, which I'm going to show you in some following slides. These are also called butterscotch wolfenites due to this beautiful butterscotch color. Now, here's a great specimen from that 1958 find at the glove mine, uh, 17 centimeters tall. And that piece was actually collected by the photographer of those last pictures, Harry Olson. Here's another piece, 7.5 centimeters across from the 1958 discovery, very famous. Uh, and highly sought after by collectors of Arizona minerals and just collectors in general. Here's a very large example, 20 centimeters across in the Royal Ontario Museum collection in Toronto, which if you ever get to Toronto, Canada, go see the collection at the Royal Ontario Museum. They've got a wonderful mineral collection on display. It's, it's truly world class. Another glove mine piece, probably collected in later years, not in the 50s, but perhaps in the 70s or 80s, even, even in the 90s, uh, this mine was producing specimens. Not all the glove pieces are butterscotch in color. The glove mine produced yellow crystals. It even collect, uh, produced black wolfenite crystals that were included with black manganese oxide. The glove mine probably also produced some of the largest wolfenite crystals in the world. Uh, I've seen crystals, single crystals from the glove mine as big as your, the palm of your hand across, five or six inches across. Here's another specimen from the glove mine. And we'll touch on uh, real quickly the Purple Passion Mine up in Yavapai County. It's more well known for fluorescent uh, fluorite and calcite, but it also produced some very nice wolfenites. Here you can see wolfenite on purple fluorite, where the mine got its name, Purple Passion. And moving down, this is our last county uh, of the talk, moving down to Yuma County in the uh, Castle Dome District. We've got a couple of mines that produced wolf, nice wolf and ice. The Puzzler Mine and specimens from the Puzzler Mine look like this. Wolfenite with nematite. 2.7 centimeters across. This is a slightly different crystal habit and color from the Puzzler Mine. These are opaque yellow beveled crystals, and that's in Mark Hayes' collection in Phoenix. 
Another beautiful specimen from the Puzzler Mine, field of view four centimeters. Not far from the Puzzler Mine is the Hull Mine, also known as the Rialto Mine in the Castle Dome District. Very similar uh, mineralogy and as one might expect, similar to uh, in appearance to the uh, Puzzler material. So this is a specimen from the Hull Mine. Here's some lovely yellow wolfenite crystals with six-ling twin cerusite crystals from the Hull Mine. This was collected probably in the late 1980s. And a really neat combination collected in the late 60s of yellow wolfenite with a green fluorite crystal. Kind of unusual. So uh, that probably. Ah, here's another hull mine piece. This one's interesting. The wolfenite crystals are perched on a corroded galena crystal. And the lead from the alteration of that galena uh, likely was the source of the lead for the formation of these, these wolfenite crystals. One more hull mine piece, pseudo-cubic crystals, kind of an unusual crystal habit, but sometimes Wolf and I can form these cube-like crystals. And well, that brings us to the end of the talk. I hope it hasn't been too boring. Um, we're going to end on the, the classic sunset shot that I took in Scottsdale. And you'll notice that the clouds are the same color as some of these Arizona wolfenites. So I hope you enjoyed the presentation, and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. That was good. Thank you very much. Put us back on the screen like that. There we are. Uh, that was, I, I haven't had any questions come in. Thanks, Bob. Um, but... Um, we could take some uh, some written questions, or if there's no questions, then I won't answer any. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did a pretty good job. Uh, Great. And, and going over it. Um, okay. I have no questions coming in. So we've had uh, lots of viewers all hour. Great. And, um, they must have enjoyed it. You must have been thorough. So <laughs> well, it's a real, real pleasure. I, uh, I could talk about Arizona minerals for hours. Okay, we'll count on that. United. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the fall. All yeah, right. Wolf, Wolf Knight's a real favorite. It's it's pretty. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have we have you know for for the viewers got to push it a little bit. Uh, Come on by the museum. We've got quite a few specimens yes. of wolfenite among everything else. And uh, yeah, we're really lucky. We've have. got several great museums in the state, and including yours. And, and uh, each museum has a lot of great wolfenite from Arizona and and other places. Yeah. Brian is saying thank you and says it was an interesting presentation. Thank and you, Brian. And I did, by the way, I forwarded the link to my dad. I don't know if he, he was watching, but uh, but he might have been. I, I'll probably hear about it tomorrow. Okay. Well, if he isn't, this this that link should still work uh, even after we finish up. Excellent. All right. So thank you very much for everybody for watching. We will be back. Let's see. I have it somewhere here. Yes, we will have it. We have our next meeting is on twentieth of April. Third Wednesday, always, uh, and our speaker will be announced. And um, it won't be Evan Jones. <laughs> we'll give him a break. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Bob. It's all right. Pleasure. Good night. And good night to all of you. And again, thank you very much for watching this has been the March 28th, March 16th meeting of the Pinal County Museum, no,
Pinal Geology and Mineral Museum and Pinal Geology and Mineral Society. And there's the museum behind me. So please come by anytime, Wednesdays through Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And keep tuned to this. Please subscribe, like, uh, comment, uh, whatever you'd like at the museum or visit us on our website, which is, um, okay, Pinal Geology Museum. Uh, you missed the show last weekend. I apologize, but uh, there is the web address, PinalGeologyMuseum.org. So for now, get my hand to do that. There we go. Good night, everybody. Thank you for watching.